everyone, my name is Elke Kohl and I'm sharing a short lesson with you today about lacto-fermentation. When you think about fermentation, what do you think about? I first think about wine and beer and cider. Today, however, we will look at fermented foods like the examples on my plate, sourdough bread and sauerkraut. Both are the result of a fermentation process called lacto-fermentation. Lacto-fermentation is caused by a species of bacteria called lactobacilli. These bacteria occur naturally on vegetables, especially close to the ground. They also live in your digestive system in our bodies, where they support the processing of our food. The basic science of this fermentation is simple. The bacteria are naturally present on the vegetables. Then you add a small amount of salt, leave the air out, and give some time. And there you have lacto-fermentation. In the second part of this video, I will show you how to do this in your own kitchen. Why is fermenting food important? It has been shown that good gut health is a central building block to our overall well-being. It supports brain function, helps avoid or heal inflammation, and can prevent the growth of cancerous cells. Lactobacilli play a key role in our gut, making nutrients more available and increasing vitamin content. An additional benefit of fermentation is that it naturally preserves the food. Something you really have to watch out for in the commercially available fermentation is that things haven't been heated. This means that the products you find in the canned goods department, like sauerkraut imported from Germany, are not what you're looking for, because the canning process has killed the live bacteria. Instead, look in the refrigerators. More and more good quality products are showing up here since general awareness of this has grown. Do read the labels and look for live bacteria. to take this Savoy cabbage and ferment it. So in order to do this and to prepare it, I will cut out the core first. That's just like this. Simple cutting away. And then I will cut the rest of it into some chunks that will be able to be fed into the food processor. You can also chop it up just with a knife. You would chop it finely so that you can afterwards massage it and squeeze it. And it's going to get noisy. There we go. So I'm massaging this, I'm squeezing it a little bit in the bowl. And it draws the juices out. That will allow for anaerobic situations. So I've decided I'm going to make this a, big, a bit of a mixture. So we're going to add a carrot into this game. our carrot and I'm going to continue massaging. You can add any ingredients you like. I've tried, I've used uh, adding raisins, I've, add, I've used beans. But you see there's plenty of liquid coming out now. It takes about 10 minutes of massaging. All right, now we're going to fill the jar. I squeeze it out as I go. I'm, I'm putting it in dry and I'll pour in the liquid after. So the liquid ends up being on top too, as, as much as I can. So I'll give it a bit of a squeeze and fill the jar tightly. Pack it right down. 
Instead of a small head of cabbage, we'll fill a jar that's about the size of a one liter jar. If you have a big family, you might step up to gallon jars. So the, the fermentation lids all have the size for the standard wide mouth jar. So that makes it pretty easy to, to identify vessels that will work with it. It's a standardized size. So when I press on this, you can see that the water is covering the vegetables. Then I have purchased recently a lid that is a fermentation cap, which will allow, this is an airlock, if you've ever made beer or wine, you already know what this looks like. But you put, you put some water inside here and then any gases that are coming from the fermentation process will rise and escape without air getting into the jar. So you can buy these in a health food store uh, or online, of course, under fermentation kits. <laughs> so to weigh this down, I'm going to put a little jar with some water on the top here that will help keeping the liquid level above the vegetables. And then we put on the lid, screw it tight, and now I need to get some water into here. Here we go. Okay. And this is ready to sit and ferment. You leave it on your kitchen counter at room temperature, and the whole thing is good to go. It'll take anywhere between four days and three weeks, depending on your taste, you can check in between.